Okay, question. Oh, that nearly fell over. Question six. Um, loads of people got their two marks for the first bit here. Use the quotient rule to show that the derivative of that is minus one over sine squared. Um, we've done this before, haven't we? Because this is just using the quotient rule to find the derivative of cot x. So um, if we're going to differentiate cot x over sine x, Emily, we're going to do v times du by dx. And if you differentiate cos, you get... Oh, what do you get if you differentiate cos? How did you know that? CD music system, excellent. So that's minus sine x. Minus, uh, that was v du by dx minus u times dv by dx. And if we differentiate sine, we get cos. All over v squared. There needed to be, because this was a show that question, because you've given the answer, there needs to be at least two steps to get the two marks. So there's one step. We can't jump straight to the final answer from this. We've got to show that we know what we're doing with it. So this is, what's this? Minus sine squared x minus cos squared x over sine squared x. And I actually would take that out as minus 1 as a common factor. There, I'm convinced that that's enough working out to guarantee me my marks. Minus 1 over sine squared x as our answer to it. OK. Now, Ryan Constraint. We've seen this before as well, haven't we? <coughs> that a question that begins with a part one that asks you to differentiate something then goes into an integration question. And so we are already anticipating that at some point during this, different, this integration question, the integral of minus 1 over sine squared x is going to come up. Because we know that that is cos x over sine x. So we've, we've got one eye on that to see what happens later on. Now this question is... Is littered with double angle things, isn't it? We've got the square root of 1 plus cos 2x over sine x, sine 2x, dx. And so, because we've got a mixture of x's and 2x's, the big hint has got to be that we're going to turn our 2x's into x terms. So let's think through what we can get from that. Cos 2x, well, this is uh, core 3 stuff, isn't it? Cos 2x, we remember, is cos squared x minus sine squared x. If we think about that in terms of other things, um, cos squared x minus sine squared x, that is, it's, uh, if we change the sine squared into a cos squared, that's the same as 2 cos squared x minus 1, or it's the same as... 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Now let's think, how is that going to relate, how is any of that going to relate to what we've got here? Well, this is 1 plus cos 2x. So look, if we add the 1 over there, 1 plus cos 2x is 2 cos squared x. So that top line becomes the square root of 2 cos squared x. That's quite a positive uh, start. I'm quite happy about seeing that there. As we're on this core 3 trig identities thing, let's also write down sine 2x. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. And 2 sine x cos x, then we'll multiply this. We've got sine x times 2 sine x cos x. So what are we ending up with here? We've got the integral from pi by 6, pi by 4. We've got root 2 times cos x on the top, because the square root of 2 cos squared x, the root 2 times cos x. We've got um, 2 sine squared x cos x on the bottom. And we see we very happily ended up with a common factor of cos x, top and bottom. So we've got root 2 over 2. Oh, well, we've got, yeah, what have we got? We've got the integral from pi by 6 to pi by 4 of root 2 over 2 sine squared x dx. Which could lead us to now wonder how on earth we're going to get through the rest of this. 
But actually, we know from part one, this is where that hint comes in, that if that is a minus 1 over sine squared x, we know how to integrate that immediately without any further work. So let's consider what we've got there. How can we make this look like a minus 1 over sine squared x? Well, obviously, we've changed stuff there. We were multiplying it by root 2 over 2. And we need a minus sign in front of that. And now that's the same thing, isn't it? And that means the thing that we're integrating becomes cos x over sine x. And we can sum in our values and finish this off, and hopefully it'll give us some nice uh, answers. Root 2 over 2 times cos pi by 4 over sine pi by 4 minus cos pi by 6 over sine pi by 6. Oh, sorry, that should be a whole bracket. So we've got minus root 2 over 2. Um, what did that give me inside that bracket? Well, it must be, what is that? 1 minus root 3. Uh, we've got a horrible mix up of brackets, and I apologise for that. Um, but if we now tidy this up, that gives us, was the answer given for this, or did we have to? So the answer was given, so it, that's enough, isn't it, to recognise that that is. Um, Minus root 2 times root 3 is root 6, so it's root 6 over 2 minus 1 times, oh, 1 times root 2 over 2, sorry. So it's root 2 over 2. There we go. And that's all done. Again, you had to be convincing in your final stage to get to that point. Everybody happy? Any questions about that? Just to Okay. Um, being really careful because you know it, it, there were quite a few little mistakes appearing. I can't remember who it was, but somebody somewhere round about here changed pi by four to pi by two, and of course they didn't end up with the right answer. And it's just that it's little attention to detail things like that. But all over, you know, everybody was making almost everybody was making little mistakes like that. Oh, and that's maths. <laughs>